when looking to the future, the bright, bright future, we must not forget the past, where we came from, and who we are today because of it. Still annoying as hell, I see, Claptrap. Screw you. Greetings, everybody. My name is Silver, and welcome to Borderlands 1. This is, in fact, the Game of the Year edition, the Gotti, and my god, it looks really good. Like, legitimately. I don't know how they're doing these remasters, but goddamn, it looks amazing. But anyways, we're here where it all began. Literally, right here in Firestone. Mmm, yeah, good times. With Borderlands 3 dropping tomorrow, I thought we would just reminisce and remind ourselves of how bad a shot I am. There we go, he had a shield. Screw you, dude. Nah, man, remember how simple this game was? I swear, sniper rifles felt like water guns, like, I don't know. Like, the way they sound and reload and stuff, they just sound really weird. Oh, he's getting attacked by stags. Sucks to suck. I'm playing Mordecai because I never played Mordecai. Uh, fun fact, when I first played this game, the very first time I gave it a try, a friend of mine was like, hey, you should give this game a try. It's called Borderlands. It's really cool. And I was like, okay. And I picked Mordecai. And I was like, you know what? He looks cool. He's got a mask and he has a knife and a bird and stuff. And I played as Mordecai, and I was like, oh my god, this game sucks. Why am I playing as this guy? He's so boring. So, yeah, I was young and foolish when I first tried playing this game, and I didn't really like it. But I gave it another chance, and I played as Roland, and I immediately fell in love with it and finished the entire game. The reason why I didn't really like this game the first time is because Mordecai sucks. Like, let's be honest, he just... He kinda sucks in this game. Like, his skill, Bloodwing, it attacks one enemy, it flies out and it hits one dude, and that's basically all it does when you start out. I'm sure when I get some more skills going, it's gonna be insane. Look at how small these skill trees are, are you kidding me? There's like seven skills here, oh my good lord. Look at the skill trees today in Borderlands 3, it's absolutely insane, absolutely insane. What's the capstone? Increases the number of tar- Yeah, the capstone is literally increase, increase the number of targets he can attack. Wow, he can attack up to two people. Oh my god. Uh, phew, I missed. Damn it. Why does this sniper rifle take so long to reload? Get out of my face, bandit killer. Screw you. Get exploded into guts and stuff. Alrighty then, so, instead of the usual just me talking and having silly gameplay, I thought we would do something a little bit fun for this video. I am going to do a comprehensive review of the entire Borderlands story up to this point. Uh, yes, I, I know that is quite a daunting task, and I'm gonna have to research and check up my lore and stuff, but that's what we're going to do. Uh, let's get into it now, I guess. Okay, so I know that hundreds and possibly thousands of YouTubers have had this idea before me, but you know, whatever, we're here, and we're gonna do it. Okay, so Borderlands takes place on the planet of Pandora. It is a uninhabited rock on the edge of the system, and people don't really know much about it. There is a large company, and that is a bit of a theme in the Borderlands games, there are these large intellect companies. One of them is called Atlas, and they got very rich off alien technology that they found in a vault on a planet called Promethea. The vaults were left behind, behind by these weird aliens called the Iridians. No one really knows what happens to the Iridians, but all that we do know is that they left these vaults all across the system. So, there's another company called Dahl that are like, hey, we want to get rich too, so they decide to take all their stuff and go to Pandora. They quickly realize that Pandora is a dirt rock with nothing on it, so what, a, what does Dahl do? They just ship all their stuff off and they just leave. They leave huge facilities behind, they leave the colonists, and they also leave a whole bunch of prisoners that they were going to use for manual labor. So now all these people are stranded on this planet, and it sucks for them because it turns out that Pandora is currently in winter. And within seven years, about seven Earth years, the planet begins to transition into spring and summer. And what happens in spring and summer? Horrifying alien creatures come out of hibernation, and the planet starts to get really, really dangerous. So all these people start to lose their minds because of all these horrifying things going on, and there we have the bandits. So 
people are going crazy for, um, from all these creatures, so now the planet is inhabited by crazy, dangerous animals and crazy, dangerous people. There is still hope for the colonists, though. News begins to spread throughout the system of the vault that is still somewhere on Pandora. Some companies are attracted back to the planet, as well as, bada bing bada boom, the Vault Hunters. So that leads into our four characters starting here in Firestone, and they proceed to cause murder and mayhem across the planet as they look for the vault. They discover that the vault requires a key, and they start looking for the, I believe, four fragments of the key across Pandora. I can't remember. They recruit the help of Tennis, a scientist who has recently lost her mind because of all her scientist friends getting killed, but she is very intelligent, but also crazy, and she helps them find the pieces of the key. Ra 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 ra, a lot of shooting and death happens, and eventually our Vault Hunters find the Vault Key, and they find the Vault. There is a... I believe they're Atlas or something, the Crimson... Crimson dudes, I can't even remember. Commandant Steel, basically, she's this crazy military general, and she's also a siren. Oh my god. She gets to the vault first, and she opens the vault. And g guess what's inside the vault of Pandora? Not loot, not treasure, a giant alien monster! I remember when I first played this game, and the sheer disappointment and sadness I felt at the end of the game, when all that's inside the vault is an alien monster. It's just like... Oh, it's a real gut punch. But anyways, Commandant Steel gets absolutely recaronied by the vault monster inside the vault, and thus ends Borderlands 1. So, coming into Borderlands 2, apparently opening the Vault of Pandora had a profound effect on the whole planet. Uh, Iridium, a alien resource, a strange mineral, has begun to erupt all across the planet, and this Iridium is incredibly useful for many applications. We move into our new four Vault Hunters, and a strange antagonist, Handsome Jack. He is this guy who's taken over the Hyperion Corporation recently, and Hyperion are starting to screw things up wherever they go. They start to take over the planet, and they're making lots of money from all the Iridium. Handsome Jack is a giant douchebag, and it is our job to take him down and take back Pandora. I hope you weren't expecting anything super in-depth here, because I'm just going to kind of skim through stuff here. So we start fighting Handsome Jack, uh, th there's there's his daughter, Angel, and uh, there's this stuff that happens in Opportunity, and then, uh, turns out Jack's daughter is a siren, and she's actually been working with him this whole time, and Jack's had this whole insane plan, and he knows absolutely everything about us because he got heaps of information in his brain from the vault on Elpis in the pre-sequel, and then all this other stuff happens, and we fight a warrior, which is another vault on Pandora, which is this giant alien creature that was that Jack was gonna use to destroy everything, and, and then we beat him, and then we get on Sanctuary, and we start flying around, and, and then all this other stuff happens and um, yeah. Okay, we're getting a little bit off track here. Let me just uh, let me just slow my roll here a little bit. So basically, the current situation that we are in, Lilith has fully accepted her duties as being the commander of the Crimson Raiders. She's ready to lead everyone to victory after her fight or the fight with Hector, this guy from an abandoned doll legion. If you haven't played the Fight for Sanctuary DLC, I highly recommend you do. I also highly, highly recommend that you play the Tales from the Borderlands, the Telltale Games series. It is very interesting, and there's a lot of stuff that happens in there that I'm sure they'll touch on in Borderlands 3, I hope, because I don't, I'm not sure if everyone played those games, but they are actually very cool, and the story is... It's on point. But, um, yeah, we are leading into a big fight with these guys called Tyrene and Troy. They are mysterious leaders of a new cult that has taken over the bandits of Pandora, and it's going to be pretty crazy. Hey, look at those porn mags. So far, all we know about our new antagonists is that Tyrene is super up herself and thinks she's a god. She literally says that in one of the trailers, God Queen Tyrene, which rhymes very well, but uh, I don't I don't appreciate random mortals thinking that they're gods. Uh, she has taken over the bandit legions with the help of her brother, Troy, and he is this dude with a big robot arm and a giant sword, and he doesn't speak, which really triggers me. I want to know why he doesn't talk in the trailers. I guess maybe he just has Silent Bob Syndrome or something. And we also know that Tyrene is able to 
take siren powers. God knows how that's possible. If you know anything about sirens in Borderlands, they're basically space wizards. Only six of them can exist in the universe at any one time, and they're very, very rare and very interesting. I just, I need to know more about these antagonists. I need to know. Uh. Anyways, guys, if you're on the fence about getting Borderlands 3, I would highly, highly recommend doing it because they are doing some incredible things. There are so many good points of the game that I just can't even bother, I can't even explain in this video just because they're doing so much awesome stuff. And hey, look, it's Knuckle Dragger, the first boss of Borderlands 2. I wonder what the first boss of Borderlands 3 will be. I'm going to find out soon. I'm so excited. So anyways, guys, I will hope that you will enjoy the Borderlands 3 content because my god, I'm going to be playing and recording it a lot, and it's going to be amazing. Uh, yeah, thank you for watching, everybody, and I'll see you all in the next one, right after I absolutely nuke all of these bully mongs with my fire grenades. <laughs> okay then, guys, I hope you enjoyed my terrible, not very good, sort of, friggin' whole thing of Borderlands, and I need to turn off the video now because I'm starting to just word vomit. I'll see you all in Borderlands 3. Bye, everybody.